We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's fun-filled episode of The Spicy Life podcast, we're talking about how to go from single mom to power couple, featuring Leticia Gardner. Everybody go crazy. Give her a round of applause. (laughs) Welcome, Leticia. Leticia is a fitness expert, lifestyle influencer, wife, mother, founder of Total Body 21, and star of The Gardener Show on YouTube. So super excited to have you in the G spot. That's guest spotlight. Don't get nervous, girl. Um, (laughs) Because we are going to explore and unpack some of these things of like your secrets, what you did. Um, You were originally a single mom, and you talk about it oftentimes on your social And now you are in a loving, healthy, happy marriage. And so you're going to give us a lot of tips um, just to keep faith alive. And so that, you know, this rhetoric that's going out there about, you know, single moms are doomed. We have to dispel that. And so I have you on the show just for that. But to warm you up, I always start off with you giving us a nice little spice breaker. You're going to tell us when you first fell in love with yourself. Um, when I first fell in love yeah. with myself, you know, I always really like, I really always liked me. I'm like, I always liked myself. I'll say that. No, I, um, I think I fell in love with myself. Gosh, when did I find out? Probably not till I got saved. I think I've definitely had mm. some like inner insecurities, but then when I got saved and like one thing, um, my mentor at the time was like, God didn't make a mistake when he made you, mm. you know? And it was like, you know what? He really did. And I'm really awesome. And you know what, despite whether I'm super educator or went to college or the fact that I was young, single mom, you know what, I'm still amazing and God can still use me. So I think from there years ago now, I can't tell you which date it was, but I'm like unstoppable. I'm open book and I feel great. Love it. Love it. Okay. So yes, you, you feel warmed up. Um, I'm going to throw some information out there and you're going to help with rebuttals. I have a ton of questions for you. I personally was raised by a single parent. Okay. Um, I talk about it often. And my mother is one of the strongest women, one of the most beautiful, finest, okay. Heavenly women on earth. She still got it going on and still be pulling me until this day. Yes. So, um, I respect, love and admire single mothers, but also want us to shine more light on why we should be appreciating them and worshiping the ground they walk on because they have so much on their plate. But based on, um, and I'll throw some stats out there just to educate folks, um, the number of U.S. children living in single parent homes, okay, has risen significantly. About 15.31 million children are living with a single mother in the U.S., where 3.27 million are living with a single father. So 15 million versus three milli, okay? That's a huge difference in the US. And then you guys know I'm I'm a Latina, so I always got to give you the black stats and the, you know, Latino stats. And so 4.2 million black families in the US um, live with a single mother. And that's risen 3.4 million um, since uh, previous years. Okay. Since 1990, it's risen by 3.4 million. Now in 2021, these are stats for that were taken 2020, um, 3.4 million Hispanic families are with a single mom. So it's risen somewhat significantly, um, within black homes, but it's also increased significantly within the Latino community. So some of these reasons that this is happening. Okay. Um, it's divorce, death, abandonment, um, single parent adoption, uh, and historically single motherhood or single parenthood was common due to like mortality rates due to war, disease, and, you know, maternal mortality as women live in a lot longer, but divorce is now common within the culture and is creating a lot of single parent homes as well. And people just deciding not to marry, still being single parents and deciding that they're just not going to marry and deal with the BS of marriage that it sometimes comes to. However, Lenny sure. and I believe that marriage is beautiful, right? Absolutely. Like we love this. So I just wanted to give some of these stats out here because we're going to deep dive into, you know, just because those statistics exist doesn't mean that we have to fall victim to the stats. You know, we, right. we there's many ways that we can dispel this um, and change the course, especially if you're a single mom out there looking for love. I don't want you to give up. Letty did it. My mama has done it. Lots of mothers um, have remarried or in healthy relationships now. And Letty's going to let us in on some of her secrets. Okay. So I want to hear a little bit about your story. How did you become a single parent initially, Leticia? 
Um, you know what? Growing up, I, I definitely come from home beginnings. Um, I was kind of on my own. I was living with my grandmother at the time. Um, I left 12th grade. I, I moved to, I moved, I, my goodness, how I'm like all over the place. So I left in 11th grade. I went back to Jersey. I was staying with my grandmother. I didn't get along with my mom's husband growing up. So mm. no longer staying there was an option. So I moved back to the inner cities um, of Jersey City. Um, um, in 11th grade, which was a really tough time for me. I was, you know, felt abandoned and rejected at home. I was out kind of on my own. My grandma was older. She worked at a factory. She wasn't really, didn't have the time or energy to chase me. Um, so I feel like I was fighting a lot of battles at that time. I actually ended up dropping out of school in 11th grade and no one even noticed. Hmm. Um, but something kind of snapped in me, um, around 17, it was my senior year to get back in school, but I had already dropped out. So that was a problem, right? So I had to go to an alternative school just to be able to graduate on time because when I was in school, I was a good student. I just was in a dark place, I think mentally and emotionally. Um, so I get to this alternative school and I meet this boy. Of course. Lord, this boy. Um, and it was, it wasn't a healthy situation, but nothing in my life at the time seemed healthy, you know? So but he was there. Um, even though he was abusive, he would make sure I had food. He would make sure I had clothes on my back, you know? Um, so there I was in this situation. But when I got, I actually ended up getting pregnant by him. And when I got pregnant, everything just like the toxin is just maxed out to a whole other level of mm. just craziness, the cheating, the fighting, the abuse physically, just everything went really bad. And, um, I found myself in a, and he said, I'm not going to be there for the baby. I'm not going to do anything at this point. I'm like very pregnant. So at that point I was like, what else am I supposed to do? But mm. figure it out for myself. I end up leaving Jersey five months pregnant um, with literally a trash bag full of clothes. And I got on a train and I moved to South Carolina first. I actually, my space had came out there in that time. Mm. I actually, actually talked to a girl there that I had knew um, growing up who was in college down there. And she was looking for a roommate. At that point in my life, I was just looking for a way out. I was 18 at the time, I was turning 19. And I was just ready to go. So I literally had $323 to my name. I was working at Wendy's and I jumped on that train with my trash bag and I moved in with her. I gave her what I had for my rent and I got a job there and immediately just started working. Um, actually went into labor at work. Wow. So that's how I started off as a single mom. That's how the journey. Okay. That sounds like, dang, the super challenging, right? What was your <laughs> mindset at that time when it came to love and it came to men and relationships? I didn't believe at that point, my, my father wasn't in my life. My brother wasn't in my life. My daughter's father at this point was no good. I did meet my father um, at 16. So when I first came up there and he just was, you know, so at that point I was like, there's no such thing as a good man. Like there's just not mm -hmm. love isn't real. It's all an illusion. And even the females around me, they always fed into me that, oh, every man is going to hurt you. Every man is going to cheat. You just have to find the one that you're okay with doing those things that never sat well with me. So I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm going to be a player too. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so we all so go that through that phase, mindset. right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're like, I'm definitely. just being in these streets and get mine, like, right? They belong to the streets, so be it. I, I was a good mom and I provided and I did what I needed to do, but I kept that life completely separate. So I didn't believe in it. What was the shift that occurred then? Because you no longer are that person. You are now in a happy, healthy relationship. How did you go from having a good time being in the streets, doing whatever as a single mom to then deciding that you were ready to be a wife. What occurred? Where, what was your mindset then? The crazy part is I wasn't looking for it then. I, when I met my husband, he was a typical, typical kind of guy I dated. He okay. belonged to the streets too. If you ask mm -hmm. me, you know, he was a typical athlete in Atlanta doing his thing or whatever. I thought he was like the fun boy, not the marrying type. Mm -hmm. I'm literally, I met him a week after my 24th birthday. So I'm still super young. I had just moved to Atlanta because when I first left, I was in South Carolina. By the time she was three, I moved to Atlanta. So I literally was just free. I wasn't thinking about love. I mean, I always wanted that. Don't get me wrong. I wanted a family. I wanted someone to love my daughter the way that I did. It's so hard being a single mom, being a mom, period. I, oh my God. It's so <laughs> much work. It's so hard. I think I cried every day, just had to get back up and get back out there, but it was, it's extremely hard. Um, 
I think when you're trying to, when you're dating as a single mom, you're not regularly dating because at this point you have to weave out like different levels of applications. Cause you need someone who's got their stuff way together mm-hmm. because you don't need both of you to be struggling. You need somebody that's ready to parent somebody else. That's going to be an example for what you want your child to see in a man growing up. And so it's a lot more complicated. And that point in my life, I wasn't ready for any of that. I didn't even know how to weave out. I didn't even believe there was a such thing, even though I always wanted it. So I really kind of kept it separate. But when I met my husband, I was crazy about him. I how did you meet him? I met him at a club in Atlanta. Oh, I had a club. Been here six months. <laughs> at a club. Clubbing. At a strip club. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. For the ladies listening, your husband is not at a strip club, but yeah, don't go there. um, We're like the 1%. But I think it's to say that you can meet him anywhere, right? Like you you have your energy open. He could be anywhere. Um, You're not the first person who I know who has met their partner in somewhere crazy like that. I even have a a client who was open-minded and didn't necessarily meet his partner at the strip club, but met his partner's sister who worked at the strip club. <laughs> and yeah, now he's in a happy, club. healthy relationship. So it can yeah, happen it, anywhere. It, it's, uh, it can definitely happen anywhere. But I think the biggest thing is just being, you know, open to it, but without on this hunt for mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Sometimes things happen naturally. A lot of times it doesn't, it happens when you least expect it or it doesn't come in the package that you expected it to come in. Was he the package that you expected? No, well, he was the fun boy, I thought. So I how did you convert him? Because a lot of women feel like they see potential in someone and they stay too long. Or, you know, if he's a hot boy, they tap out. So how did you stay in the game so long and actually like, massage this relationship you know honestly he had to do a lot of that work Mm -hmm. I was a runner you know it was him a lot of people were like well how did you get him to change honestly as much as credit I want to take for it Mm -hmm. and trophies I feel like I deserve for it it honestly was his choice I think when a man finds that one he's gonna make the adjustments and not the excuses right because I tried to break with him all the time and he (laughs) refused (laughs) he was like I'm not living without you um kind of person so it wasn't I will say for us, we wanted to be together. We okay. really did. We were, we were crazy about each other. We didn't know how to be together. Mm. So therapy, counseling, getting the proper tools, letting go of the image. I thought it was supposed to be letting him go the image. He thought it was supposed to be getting rid of the examples we saw growing up, not mm. our friends, not our parents, what works for us and how can his personality, my personality come in as one union um, and do what's best. One thing about he's an athlete and I love team sports and all that type of stuff. So we definitely have like a partnership, a teammate type of together. So we make a great team, you know, and both of us always want to do what's best for the team. That's kind of how we run the house. Um, So that was really good because both of us were willing to put in the work. It, whether you're on offense, that's what it takes. Defense, I think it takes both people wanting to really putting it in. And he, he wanted to make it work. He wanted to change. He wanted to be a better man. I, I didn't force him to see. I, I think that's the yeah. key nugget right there. He wanted it for himself versus you forcing it on him. He right. wanted to step up to the plate. He wanted to grow. He wanted to evolve. Um, I want to share some of these, um, uh, negative stereotypes about single moms. And I want you to dispel them for me. Okay. Okay. Um, let me go through this list of why potentially men come up with excuses or men have these sentiments of not wanting to date single moms. Um, I shared with you like this video of this dude, um, ranting, Mm -hmm. um, on, and I think like with Derek, what's the name? Derek Jackson, um, oh. had, uh, posted the video, whatever as a rebuttal, but I want to hear from an actual single mom, the rebuttal. Okay. So here's just some of the things that we hear out there. That's, you know, rhetoric about why men don't want to be with single moms or why maybe their value has lessened. Um, all of which, uh, we're shifting the belief around. Okay. Cause I think it really stems down to our beliefs. And if you believe this about yourself, you will manifest this. But if you believe otherwise in a more positive headspace, you will manage it fast positive results. So here's 10 reasons why some men refuse to date single moms. Okay. So you're going to rebuttal each one. Um, okay. Single moms come with drama and men don't want to deal with the drama. Men are drama. <laughs> <laughs> men are drama. 
No. Very true. <laughs> and I may have my drama, but I'm, I had them before the kids came. In. So it wasn't necessarily the single motherhood that made you drama full. It's if no. you are a dramatic person or you have, you know, things to unpack or package that you're coming with, it's not necessarily just put on the kids. No, absolutely not. If anything, I feel like my kid settled me and made me grow up in areas and mature a lot quicker. I couldn't be out here hanging and partying. I'm a whole mom. I have to be a lot more stable and put together and have my stuff together way before I, most people my age at that time. So, so that? I definitely single moms, more responsible. Okay. Way more responsible. That's the rebuttal right there. Um, he doesn't believe you're available to date. Like you don't have time to date him. Um, it, well, I will say that dating on time schedule can be different, mm -hmm. but I feel like in all things, we make time for what we want. So don't get me wrong. I've used my kid as an excuse not to date when I don't want to. <laughs> so she's probably, let me, but as women, when we want something, we make time for it. So I'm pretty sure she's just saying that to, um, cause she don't like you. <laughs> See, ooh, and how about this fellas? If you really want to boss up, um, go out with her and hire her a babysitter. You want to spend time with her? Make that a part of the courtship. I get her Absolutely. a babysitter so that that way you can spend time with her and problem solved right there. Period. Uh, he doesn't, um, oh, he wants you available 24 seven. So this next one, he wants you available 24 seven. He wants access to you 24 seven and he can't because you have obligations to your child. Oh, well, that's just rebuttal. a red flag, period. There's no one that can be available to you 24 seven. You're not on your beck and call. Ladies, if that's what he wants from you, you need to let him go. Cause we're bossing up in 2021. We're not, it's not 1920s. <laughs> no. Ladies, you come these along points, with you Look, Listen. fellas, I hope you're paying attention too. Cause we're, we're dispelling some of these, you know, myths out there. Um, yeah. He thinks he can do better. So he thinks that like, he can find him a woman who doesn't have kids or that, you know, has a better package than, you know, the, the baggage that allegedly children create. And he might, he might feel like that, but you know what? Guess what? This is one thing my husband and I actually talked about. One of the reasons why he fell in love with me, one of the reasons why he felt like I was the one mm -hmm. was seeing me with my kid. Mm -hmm. The way that I put her first, the way that I was all about family, the way that I prioritized that even at a young age, that's what made him realize, boy, if she does that, I don't have to worry about having kids, but if she's going to make sure they're good, she's going to be a great wife because she already, you can already see it. I don't yep. have to guess. So many of these women become moms and realize that this ain't really what they want. Facts. And then they don't do right by their kids because they're still in a selfish stage. Yep. Single moms don't have the time to just be selfish. We're more selfless people because we are the ones holding it down. And most men and in, 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 in most relationships, that's the key thing that keeps it together is being selfless. So. Absolutely. See, look pay attention to a woman who and how she treats her children if she's nurturing because that lets you know right there how she's going to treat your children so it's actually a great sign it's a green flag yep okay he doesn't want to raise someone else's kid what happened when a man says that or that's you know the, the 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 you know the sentiment what do we say to that he doesn't want to raise someone else's kid he wants one of his own throw the man out give him back to his mom <laughs> <laughs> I feel like real men aren't scared of women with kids. They're scared of the women that don't take care of their kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's when they have to do all the, it's a lot on them if they're the ones to, hey, let me get this right or helping you get that right. But most women who are good moms and that are handling their business have no problem dating or getting a man still because a man can respect that. I feel like, I mean, I'm married with kids and one we have biologically together and I still do all the work. <laughs> that's got it easy so that's just <laughs> that just sounds crazy to me that a man's like i'm raising a kid dads don't have to do as nearly as much it's unfair it's unfair i will give my husband credit though he took paternity leave for me so that i can um stay running the spicy life because i have mm -hmm. just too many clients to drop after having the baby and it, like it also fuels my soul like i'm i'm just i'm in love with what i do so he took paternity leave so when i tell you that this man is stepping up like diapers feeding everything like taking him everywhere it makes me fall in love with him even more when i see how oh, yes. he is to the, the baby best. like oh my, my god i love it he would have lit he literally would have breastfeed if he could <laughs> he would literally hold her while i'm like i got it no i'll hold her to feel like he's connected to oh that's so sweet i love that and i love seeing 
you guys all together and you know how great he is with the kids i'm acting like i see it in person but on ig you make it look really good girl um, yeah, it's real it's just <laughs> like that too <laughs> okay what about this next one um he doesn't want to risk attachment to your children what do you have to say for those fellas well i do believe that kids go through breakups too so i mm. do believe dating as a single mom you do have to be careful and until you guys reach that stage where you guys are like okay we're really doing this yeah i don't think that you should just bring people around your kids i was going to ask um, that when do you think is a reasonable time to introduce and when did you do it with your husband? I wouldn't give it a, a number as far as time, but mm-hmm. where you guys are in the relationship mentally, physically, I mean, emotionally, you know, like, yeah. are you in a space where like have these real conversations? Like, are we really trying to make this with a long haul? Like, or are we just still playing? If there's still flags and there's still this and there's still that, you know, you this the complicated stuff. Absolutely yeah. not. I feel like you need to yeah. be sure. Because at that point, if you guys are seriously in love with each other and you guys feel like you have a good foundation just between the two of you, then it's better to bring the kids in like soon. Because at the end of the day, like you just said, as a woman, um, you watching your husband with your kid is what makes you fall in love with him even more. Yeah. Well, that is like to a whole nother level watching a man love on your kids. That's not even his kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And stepping up. So and from there, it has to work. It has to work full circle. You can't get with a man who doesn't love or respect or invite your kids over. You can't date a man who's not, hey, I'm coming over with some food. It's not bringing your kids some. We're not showing up to the games. We're not supporting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At that point, well, we reached that point. You already know I have a kid. One thing about me, I told my husband on the first date that I was a mom. Good. You, you know, call him instantly. Our first interaction, not even the first date. The first yeah. time, we, hey, my name is, okay, hey, I, uh, I got a kid. You didn't hide it. I didn't hide it. I told him within the telling each other our names. That's how quick I was with it. Let's go ahead and weave this out right now. I think telling immediately is a great tip right there. um, So that that it's clear that you, you know, that you have family that you're coming with. Um, But also, let me just put this out there to you guys. Don't put it on, don't put your children's pictures on your dating profiles. A lot of people will be like, well, I just want to be honest and let them know that I have kids. So their Bumble and Hinge account, (laughs) We'll have pictures of them with their kids. That's what we're not doing. We're telling them on the yeah, first date. We're not <laughs> promoting our children on our dating app. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, no. Don't do that. <laughs> but the to your point, part, dating apps weren't even out when we got together. Right. That's true. So I couldn't even imagine what that looks like. I guess now it's kind of like Instagram. Though. Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> it's like a form of communication that we're using. It's a tool to meet people. But to yeah. your point about the um, breakup process of, with children, I also believe in a courtship process. One thing that my um, dad, my stepdad, did, he knocked it out the park my mom fell even more in love with him because he was courting me as well, taking me out on a date. So he would take my mom out on a date and then take me out on our separate date to the movies, to, uh, what's, what is it? Um, what's the one with the mouse? Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. (laughs) Take it. I think they're like out of business now, but he would be like taking me like to all these, you know, other stuff, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's crazy. Okay. Well, but no, I I think that's super important. Yeah, Definitely so that's another important. tip for guys. There you guys and go. And it should be natural. One thing, ladies, that's one thing we got to pay attention to as well. Because one thing about us, it was so natural and we all kind of came together that people is crazy part is people just assume that was his kid and I was the stepmom. Mm. Probably mostly because our color, but 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 Aren't that's you how mixed, natural. Lady? What do you mix with? I, yeah, my father's black, my mother's Puerto Rican. So okay, so you're a Latino like me. Yep, just like you. Right. Snaps for that. But um, but yeah, so but most people thought, oh, Rod had another kid we didn't even know, or that's just that must be his girl from mm-hmm. when he played from over here. I don't know what they assumed, but it was so their interaction and their upbringing was so natural. She was four when they actually met. So okay, so she was young. She was still super young. Okay. And she did she recognizes him as like her father. Yeah, she calls him Rod, but she definitely, yeah, that's the only father she knows. Her father's never been around. Dang. See, I love that. Now, what about the men who say they're not ready for a serious relationship and kids automatically make the relationship serious? Like we can't just have a good time and have fun because you have a kid. No, the application process is completely different. So if you're not ready, then just ladies pay attention to that and keep it moving. Mm. That, that's, I think that's more on us. Let them go immediately. Listen, believe him, believe him and keep it moving because what you don't want to do is get emotionally invested yep. then bring him around your kid because you're emotionally invested and then mm. you put your kids through that. Definitely not the move. 
that part. And what about fellas who say like, well, they don't like kids, right? They're not ready for kids. They don't even know if they want to have kids. Then they's definitely not husband material. (laughs) A lot of women think that they can convince them. Well, if you just meet my kid or if you fall in love with me, then you will want to have kids. No, ladies, don't do that. If changing your mind is a better plan than thinking about changing a man. No, Mm -hmm. it's got to be who he is. That part. And then also he's a single dad and likes it that way. So he already has kids. He doesn't want to sign up for somebody else's kids. Well, then that's just hypocritical. Because if you have a kid and I have a kid, you can't fault me for what you're going through right now. You're in the same situation. That just sounds Thank crazy. You. He's got baby drama with his baby mama or with the mother of his children. And he doesn't want to deal with now the father of your children. So that is very much hypocritical because you still have to deal with the mother of his children. Yeah, no, absolutely <laughs> not. And, and, and there's different instances. There's definitely, I definitely think there's levels to it. This is something my husband and I was talking about. Uh, even last night, because we were talking about me doing the show today, is um, there's different levels to it, right? Because my f- husband had a son already. He's 19. And mm-hmm. I have a daughter already who's now 16. And now we have one together. So we are a blended family. Yay. But that was one thing he accepted early on because he's like, well, if she got one, I already got one. So that can't be the problem. You know, and truly, when you love somebody, you're going to love what comes with them because the power of love. But I do think it's different instance. I know women who've got five kids and they got three baby daddies and they don't handle their business like they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Yes. When we're talking those stages and levels to being a single mom, I think that can be where we limit things because at mm-hmm. the point it's about you as a woman, right? And you're the common denominator. If you keep having kids by unworthy men at that point, I think as we have to look at ourselves, like, what am I doing here that I just, you don't just fall and just have a baby. You right. know what I'm saying? And to me, after the first one, it's traumatizing enough. I don't know how people just keep going like, whoa, this is hard. But is, are, are the women who have multiple fathers doomed? So say they did in their youth or adolescence make the mistake of having um, the wrong partners to have you know children with. Okay, so now they have two, maybe two fathers um, or three fathers by different men. Okay, are they doomed? Do they now have to settle and stay yeah. single? No, I don't believe that. I really don't. I just think I don't. I think that men are not scared away from kids. I think, though, when um, I believe it's levels to to it based off the type of men you get based off who you are. I think mm-hmm. in our relationships, kids or no kids, what who you end up with is a reflection of how you see yourself. Facts. You know what I mean? So but at some point when you're a mother, you have to see things bigger than you see yourself. Facts. So for me, it's really important that for as single moms as dating there's no more dating these guys who are still figuring it out they need to be stable financially mentally healthy physically like we spiritually spirit, all of the above because as single moms we're ready to pull our hair out all the time <laughs> i need someone to be my peace my scene the rock walk me through it i need mm-hmm. you to be the water to my fire every once in a while it's about finding the and vice versa you're going to bring different things to the table but i think it's important to to heal to forgive not to Mm. be emotionally invested to your baby daddy Mm. stuff like that a lot of times women are still so at him one thing about me when i left i left i didn't put his name on the birth certificate i don't care nothing about none of that i don't have no baby daddy drama if you don't want to be there so be it Mm -hmm. i'm cool with that you know i'm gonna do it the best you know, that I can do. And a real man is going to respect that. He's going to see that. I'm not out here chasing no check after you. Don't get me wrong. I feel like men should pay child support. They should pay financial. Mm -hmm. You know, they should take care of their kids. They really should. But we can't force that. And sometimes I'm not being around. Like in my case, it's a blessing. Yeah. And sometimes it is. Sometimes. But there are those fathers who still want interaction that still come into the picture that do create more drama you know, of, and I know one makes it more challenging. <laughs> You're like, I'm thinking it of may, one I right got now. a friend and it's always <laughs> trouble. But guess what? She is still married, having a baby with her new husband. She has three children working on this one with him. And he is drama and he calls this hell. But guess what? doesn't mean that she isn't worthy of a good man or a good husband because it's exactly what she still has she's right a good now woman. she's still a good woman i think it starts with us as women we cannot allow the seeds that these broken men plant in mm-hmm. us to believe that we're unworthy because of the choices we made when we were younger but it doesn't matter 
It doesn't, it doesn't matter. As long as you're solid, as long as your character's yeah. right and you're genuine, you can have any man you want. That's just how I see it. That part, that part. <laughs> Fact. Yeah. Okay. So there was a post that I did actually last week and I was talking about being a single mom and um, there was a couple of guys on my page and even girls. Um, oh, you just have pretty privilege. Most mm. single moms are um, limited and the type of men they can get there lose value so they don't so the guy said and i think it was kevin saying that guy that's always oh, kevin crazy samuels yeah girls. that your worth yeah. is less if you're a single mom right so and so um someone had put that you can't get a certain type of man you can't get a man of a certain type of statue because mm-hmm. you're a single mom you're limited to these other type of guys down here mm-hmm. financially brackets and stuff like that and um I laughed. A matter of fact, it was a TikTok. I had did a TikTok where I was grateful for finding a man who loves my kid, even though it wasn't his kid. Mm-hmm. And they were like, they got on to me about the privilege, privilege is what made me open up about that. Mm-hmm. Pretty privilege don't have anything to do with it, first of all, because mm-hmm. you can be beautiful and still get cheated on, still get abused, still get abandoned, Thanks. still get left. Clearly, that's why I ended up with a single mom, right? I was still cute then, even younger. <laughs> so, it didn't matter. We can um, laugh about it now. Back, yeah, <laughs> but it was hurting back then. Sure. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but no, I still dated very top class type of men. You know what I mean? Having kids did not stop the type of men that came to me. And I mean, I can keep, I can pull and keep the best of them. That was never an issue. Mm. So don't believe that just because you've got kids that you can only get a man of a certain type of, that you gotta settle. Mm-hmm. right? You don't have to settle. You do not have to settle men that are successful, men that have a lot going on, men that are stable and have security and that can provide mm-hmm. that for you and your family are still open for you. Mm. So that is one of the biggest things I wanted to touch on. Clearly I'm proof of that, right? You can still do it. And I didn't graduate college. Mm. I was still figuring out who I was. So I came with all, I came with all the worst type of baggage you could think of. And guess what? I still got a man that is worthy of an amazing thing because I am amazing Mm. and I deserve a worthy thing. You know, so you have to know that about yourself in order to get that. You have to see yourself as that before you can go get it. Correct. You have to believe in your worth, in all that you have to offer, that you are beautiful on the inside and on the outside, right? And you will be able to attract the love that you desire, but more importantly, select the love that you desire based on the healthy mindset. What, so you kind of touched on this saying that your husband um, already had a child, but what would you say to men who were like, well, I want to have the first kid with you. You already have kids. So I don't want to date you because I want my first kid to be my first kid. I don't want to have your first kid as our first kid. I would tell him to kick rocks because he's too late. <laughs> too late. It's not going anywhere. It's too late. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't change the numbers. Okay. You can't change, you, you can't, can't change, change reality. Here. If you're trying to be full fledged, if not, you know, any, and I've dealt with that in the past. Don't get me wrong. Guys feeling like, Oh, you can't be around or you're busy or you got your kid or you can't come out. You can't hang out all night. It's like, well, Hey, it's not going to be for everyone. And trust me, a lot of the ones that pass by, you don't want that in your life. Anyways, mm. we have to want, better for ourselves and our kids and these men with all these excuses and they're toxic that's crazy absolutely because half of them have kids Mm. that's the part that's the part that is so baffling to me is that half the guys that say this are grown with baby mamas not wives big mamas that part okay so let's talk about a little bit about you as a couple right Mm -hmm. you're viewed as a power couple um you and your husband uh, have empires that it looks like that you built together. It looks like he, yeah. is he a part of total body 21? No, no, no. He's okay. Of course. Did you build that on your own? I did. Okay. And he has his own fitness line and career, right. That he's doing as right. well. Mm-hmm. How did you guys like create this partnership where you guys support each other's business? How did you become a power couple? Um, you know, he's retired NFL. But when we got together, like a lot was going on with the market. He was like investing in these condos. He lost a lot in all of that. And we kind of were really just surviving in the beginning Mm. of our relationship, which causes, you know, a lot more issues on its own. But 
it was a lot. It honestly wasn't until we got saved and we got in a church together and we started praying together and we got mm-hmm. that spirituality on one accord that like blessings just started coming out wow. out of nowhere. So, um, and I always fully supported him. He always fully supported me. We've always from the beginning made a great team. We're always going to do what's best for the union. We're always going to figure it out. That's me and him. We're just going to figure it out. Whether we got to thug it out, we're going to figure it out together. Um, so um, as we got saved, he, started, he picked up golfing, started golfing and he was so good, like so early on, he literally mm-hmm. learned how to master the game in like six months, which, which is not a real thing in the golf world. Oh wow! And there was a CEO there of this billion dollar company, a tech company that, um, wanted him to come work for him just because he was that good at the game. He's like, man, if you're that determined in who you are, that can only mm-hmm. imagine what you can do just in any space of opportunity. So um, th- from there, and that was like, like I said, NFL player golf technology, that's insane. It was just mm-hmm. insane. The blessings that started to come. He ended up leaving there and opened up his own technology company as a freight company. Fitness is something he's always loved. Mm-hmm. Um, he lives in the gym. So it started to like inspire me. Like I used to always worked out with him and, I would train my girlfriends all the time. I didn't even see it as a business. And at that point in my life, you know, we had gotten married and I was in survival mode as a single mom with him Mm -hmm. the whole time. But at that point, and I was bartending, he was like, no more club stuff. You need to like figure out what life is like next. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, there's too much money in this. I'm not, you know, but he saw me bigger than I saw myself, but I didn't receive it at the time. I felt like it was an attack. I felt like it was control. I was like, no, but he's like, there's no end game in the club world. You got to think there's more to you. So I um, started to actually like do some healing within myself and praying and fasting. And I end up asking God for a vision and fitness was it. And it was so crazy because it was right in front of me. Yeah. So in 2017, I, uh, or 2016, I started a fitness company and I actually got with this um, team and they scammed me like crazy. Oh no. It was so bad. I fell on my face. My husband was like, you know what? This ain't it. This is still it. This just wasn't with them. So he actually got me in touch with some other people actually the team I'm with now um he kind of led me that way and it just kind of blew up now so I've always targeted women one thing about us I like I feel like I target women he doesn't mm-hmm. train women I don't train men um that's how we buy our gates in our relationship so I started mine off and it started going really good but we'd get a lot of like questions about the men stuff and how Rob looks how he looks mm-hmm. so he decided to go ahead and shoot his own line so he actually started it after me oh wow though he inspired me to do it first yeah so he did it <laughs> So it's not his main job, but it's what he really loves. Like he loves the gym. That's his outlet. That's his piece. That's his, he's better at it than me for sure. (laughs) I feel like your testimony right now is a testimony to um, alignment, right? When you are down a certain trajectory or path, life is all about the decisions and choices that you make and you can go left or you can go right. But when you have a partner who can lead you, that's in your ear, guiding you, it really can make a huge difference down what path you choose. And it sounds Mm -hmm. like, you know, him believing in you, but also understanding and having, you know, a vision, right. And knowing that there's a bigger purpose for you helped you find your purpose. And this is what we call your purpose mate. You know, you may, you're to the trajectory of your career may not have gone down or even be what it is today without having that partner. And I heard you, I think, um, mention, which I really appreciated, dispelled this, and I want you to speak a little bit on it, this um, rhetoric of, I don't need a man, I want a man. I don't need a man, I want a man. Um, Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? Because I've heard you mention that before, where you're actually like, no, I need my man. Yeah, I, I, you know what, it's so funny, out of almost 13 years we've been together, the longest for the most part we've been apart was maybe four days like we're always together we do everything together we're best friends um we didn't even know that wasn't a normal thing until someone pointed out to us like y'all are always together like we like each other (laughs) but um but it's so funny so uh, last year this is when it really hit me that I needed him because I would Mm. get mad like I don't need you Yes, I do. So um, he had to go away for work and he was actually gone for a couple of weeks. And it happened to be around my birthday. And this is the longest we've ever been apart. But during that time, I mean, I probably cried a couple of times and I'm not much of a crier, but I was like, 
I didn't, it was an eye opener how much he actually makes my life one so much smoother. Everything mm. is so much easier. He's, he just has my back in everything, whatever I miss, he picks up every time. So I'm not even realizing I'm dropping stuff on the way. Yeah. Right. Cause he's always right there and vice versa. So when he wasn't here, it was an eye opener to like, mm how much he does like I feel like so just even the littlest things like he does so much and it was like I couldn't imagine that like not having you you know like yeah. like I need you but even earlier on in our relationship I never felt like this for anybody and most people probably call it toxic but I was so <laughs> crazy about him I was like I never felt like and he would say the same thing which is crazy but I never felt like I needed someone to like just breathe like I just mm. needed him around I just needed his presence I just needed him close we didn't have to be doing anything we didn't have to be going anywhere we could just be like I just want you to sit right here and not even mm. talk to me just being there the I presence. never felt that yeah it was just something about it that just brought even in the middle of our craziness I don't it care just, peace you guys are passionately just, in love I feel safe like I just ah. Uh, you I know, that. I can't really explain I know the it, feeling. but yes, girl. But that's why I'm when you posted that said. thing, I think yeah. like it was in your comments or something, you had said, um, you need your husband. I was clapping for that because I think, um, a lot of female empowerment and the rhetoric that is out there is about this whole, like, I'm good by myself. I don't need a man. I want a man, you know, and you know, when I decide that, you know, when come along, then I'll choose a man, but you know, I'm single, not because I can't get a man, but I'm single because, you know, I haven't met the one I hear that so much, but the truth of the matter is, is that we were built, born, created to have partnership. We were not created to be in isolation. So important. (laughs) Listen, I went to a woman women empowerment event I'll never go back but it literally gives me like a headache especially like literally uh because I'm just like let me be quiet because I'm gonna mm-hmm. go off and just walk out as soon as I can but it was I was probably one of the only few people in the room out of like 50 girls that was married and team married mm-hmm. you know I believe in love I believe in relationship I believe it takes work though and mm-hmm. not everyone's willing to put in that work but all of these women all of them super educated super successful yeah. lawyers doctors the whole night it felt like a man bashing segment though mm-hmm. you know like oh men in the work industry and this and that and my man at home he didn't support me so I left and he wanted me to be home and it was all of this mm-hmm. and I was like at the end of the day as women, we make our own choices, but yet you want love right. because your career doesn't keep you warm. You know what right. I mean? I'm not mad. If I feel like God isn't going to put me in a situation that's going to take me away from my family or my yeah. husband or my kids, you know what I mean? But it not, not that those opportunities won't come. It just won't be one I will take. You know what I mean? I don't feel like I should be gone more than I am home. Mm-hmm. And even when it comes to the work industry, like I work with men, I have a husband who supports me, but I have a work hu- not, um, a man at my job or that helps run everything and he supports it too. So I mm. feel like we put ourselves in these situations that we want to blame men all day, every day. Mm. And it's just like, no, that's not the case. How about we take responsibility for the environment we're putting ourselves in? To, and to that point, um, I think that there is, it's not easy, but I think that there is balance that can be created, right? Absolutely. In your personal life and your professional Mm -hmm. And I ride hard for the spicy life, like building my company. I always tell people like that was my baby before I had my baby. And I have certain choices that I have to make now. Okay. I'm not going to work on the weekends. Um, If my husband says he needs me to make him something to eat, or, you know, he needs me to help him with, you know, the baby really quick before I hop into a session, I'm going to let my clients know I'm running 15 minutes behind. And they have to be understanding of that. If they want the amazing service that I have to give and the transformational work that I have to give, you're going to be patient for me because I'm putting my family first in this moment, just like you want to put your family first and, you know, change, you know, what's going on in your dynamic. I have to do the same so that I can keep my home stable. I'm not trying to lose my man. It's just like you, my man, he is a part of my purpose. He is my purpose mate. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how small of a community that is with women. Who feel like we feel like I'm yeah. not losing my man. I'm not. What are you talking about? I've you lost friends so because up. people feel like, oh, your loyalty, <laughs> is always, your loyalty is always to your husband first. Of course it is. That's what the Bible says it should be. <laughs> and in this front, I thought we were reading out the same Bible, but clearly we're not. Oh, the covenant is between <laughs> you and your friend. No, it's not. 
It's probably between me and my husband. No, that needs to be balanced. You can definitely massage your relationships with your friends, nurture those relationships. But when it comes to the priority, you do have to and should be putting your partner first. The Bible even says they should come before your children. So, you know, we we have to honor that. But I do think that it is a juggling act. And I think that when you sit in your feminine energy, you do it so much better than when trying to sit in your masculine energy and control all of the dynamics, right? Mm -hmm. You have a partner for that. Let, 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 allow him to step up and lead some of that. Um, but I can get into a whole nother episode about masculine feminine. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. You're going to give me just like five little, th- five little tips, maybe that these single moms out here can do in order to find love. What advice do you have to give them? Um, just so that that way they can make it easier on themselves, um, in order to maybe potentially meet someone. Um, Okay, first one off the head, I would say be honest on the first date about having kids, Mm -hmm. but don't make the date about your kids, Mm, right? Don't go into the history like I did about my, you know, like I just did on the show, as far as everything I've gone through and how I got here. No, don't bring up your baby daddy, don't bring up your exes, don't bring up the struggles of being my baby mom. And all the stress that comes with it, or you know what I mean? Just kind of be free. You still want to be a woman, feel sexy yep. that night, feel yourself, um, you know, be about your kids, but don't flaunt it the whole night, you know, mm-hmm. let there be some room for, Hey, I'm still a woman. I love that. Yep. Though, yeah. Um, two, I would say, um, definitely mentally prepare yourself. Um, I think both emotionally um and just mentally with with the way keep your expectations low when you're going on dates right I think we put so much high expectations on what we want it to be based Mm -hmm. on what the ideas we create in our own head because sometimes we'll plan out a whole dream picture and that ain't even close to who that person is so allow them to just be themselves without putting anything on them or expecting anything too high. We know what you want, but, you know, be cool on it until you kind of, until someone shows you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Three, definitely listen to a man when he says that he's not ready for kids or he doesn't want anything serious. Say that again for the people in the back of the congregation. Listen, (laughs) I'm serious. You cannot change a man. A man has to decide on his own. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are. It doesn't matter how good you look. It doesn't matter what you spent on your body or your hair. It does not matter. Um, But yeah, stop trying to change a man. Mm -hmm. Believe him when he shows you and tells you me up front. If a man is going to tell you up front, yeah, you know, I'm just chilling. That's right, right there. Be done. <laughs> Pay for your half of the check and keep it moving. Don't even let it, just keep it moving. Thanks. You know, um, <laughs> that's how that's how I see. It. Okay, bet. Put him in that box. Um, that's three. Let's see four. No, I think that was four. Oh, that was four. Okay, I think that was five. four. No, I think you just have one more. I'm not sure. Okay, okay, we'll go with five. Five. I would say. As soon as you're sure that this person is someone that you're really into and he makes you feel like he's, you know, you guys are in that space, go ahead and set up that date for everyone to kind of meet because Mm -hmm. that's going to really tell if you're going that way or not in the right direction because that dynamic all has to flow together naturally. Um, I don't think I could have stayed in a relationship where my daughter, even as young as she was just kind of rejected or felt bad or wasn't ready for that. I think your kids, depending on ages, they have to be at a level of readiness too, because being a blended family is hard in the best situations, Mm -hmm. you know? So definitely don't let your kids stop you from finding love, but also allow them to be in a place to receive it because you don't want anything else to hurt the relationship or, any more craziness that comes with it, I guess. I love that. And I'm pretty sure that's five. I'll play this back. Um, you guys don't be mad at me if I counted five and it was only four. Wait, give us a bonus one just in case. Cause they were that was a solid get, four too. That, that yeah, was, give me give me a bonus solid. one just in case, Letty, because they may come for me if uh I miscounted. So give me some, okay, give I'm some gonna bonus. Say this because you know I'm in the fitness world. So listen, lady, just because you have baby, listen, men are visual creatures, whether you like it or not. Keep it sexy no matter what. I have had two kids at different ages and stages of my life, and I'm still fine as ever. I believe in keeping sexy forever. So do not let the fact that you have kids and you're tired and you're exhausted not keep yourself together, keeping your sexy. You can bounce back after kids. So 
um, still continue to be your best self and not just until you get a man after as well. Ooh, Letty so. came with the fire for that extra one, y'all. Like, that bonus. Because <laughs> that one, let me tell like you. Like you. I, Today is Monday, leg good. day. And my husband is very much like, so I think you're cleared um, to now work out after, <laughs> after labor. Um, we will be in the gym this evening. And I'm like, dang, it is time for me to get back on it. What yeah. tips do you have to, because you are a fitness expert, what tips do you have to um, motivate partners in a loving way so that they don't make their partners feel bad if they have let themselves go a little bit? put on a few pounds from COVID. What are some tips on like how you guys can, you know, work out together or what, what's the encouragement look like in a healthy relationship versus just telling your partner they lost themselves? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is knowing your partner, right? And 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 being in a healed place. I'm in a healed place. My husband is a very honest person. I'm always telling him like, don't give me your truth. Give me like somebody else's truth. Give me the, <laughs> the side that you wouldn't actually say because my husband is the one, he's going to say it. Oh yeah, you'll look you're getting a little thick over here. Oh, your little your abs disappearing. He's that person. Mm-hmm. But I know that's who he is because that's how he gets motivated. I'm yeah. always like, that is not what motivates me. Mm. I don't got nothing to prove, but I'm in a healed place, you know, so I don't get offended by that because I know that's who he is and he mm. really doesn't mean harm. And it is true. Nobody wants to hear you gotten fat from your partner. But <laughs> if we can be in a healed, solid place, you can be like, damn it, you're right. I need to put this donut down. Right. But did he lie um, though? <laughs> right. But yeah. But you know, but you know, my one thing I think is the most important, one thing my husband is good at is that he leads by example, right? Is if I'm not gonna go to the gym, he built a gym in the house. So I ain't gotta go nowhere. Just come on downstairs. He's gonna make it a vibe. He'll create the atmosphere for me to where it's fun. We're both competitive. So, okay, let's try a challenge together. Or I like outdoor things. So I don't want to always just be in the gym, but let's go for a hike. Come Mm. on, let's go for a walk. So he's good at doing um, stuff like that to get me up and active without telling me, no, you need to go work out. No, come on, let's go for a walk outside. Come on, you want to race over here? Mm. Because I'm into that. So knowing your partner is the biggest thing. But me, on the other hand, all I got to do is be like, boy, your back is looking soft. (laughs) And it will make him go camera time in the gym. I was picking at him because he's lost a lot of weight because he just had surgery. Mm. Um, And he's not clear to like really work out yet. He's just still doing um, PT. So I've been picking with him lately. Like, well, you've gotten so small. Like you used to be, uh, oh, you no. know, now you're, you're what surgery did he get? Eating. Huh? What surgery did he get? He tore his pec muscle off his shoulder. Oh no, girl. My yeah. husband just tore his bicep last week. So oh, my yes, he like only has one hand to hold the baby now. So he had surgery oh. and had to get his, um, I don't know, bicep re stitched or whatever, it's but he's in lot. an arm brace and everything, a cast. And so, yeah, it's, he's, but he's still working out with his other arm though. <laughs> oh yeah. See, that's what my husband too. The next day he was back in there. I said, don't play. But when he had surgery, oh, it messed him up. He couldn't actually do anything for a long time. Oh, poor So baby. he's just, he's about to reach that 12 week mark where he'll be able to go back and get back to it. So, and I know him, he'll go hammer time. He'll yeah. Be better than he was before. But that type of stuff motivates him. Me telling him he can't do something or he right. ain't good at it is what drives him to go. That's his form of time. communication that he needs. For. And you have form. to know what motivates your partner. I 100%. like what you suggested though. You said like, um, work out together um, is what I heard. I heard um, switch it up, make it diverse, a fun yeah. routine for your partner. Yeah. Um, you can be direct, but you can also be motivating by setting an example. So I'm hearing mm-hmm. like a lot of different things that you can Definitely. do in order to encourage your partner. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of partners out there that are like, this ain't what I signed up for. Um, can yeah, we get it together? Actually, he, he speaks out a lot. A lot of times we go to the gym together, but we don't work out together mm-hmm. because as a man and as a woman, we're doing two very different things. Our yeah. bodies are different. Men want to work on upper body all day. I want to work on lower body right. in my stomach. You know what I mean? So don't get me wrong. Where we've gotten to has been trial and error. I think the biggest advice, men, if you're listening, your wife, your girl does not want you to be her trainer. She wants you to work <laughs> out with her, but she doesn't want you to train her there's because your difference. exercise is different than what her exercise is to be. Different. our <laughs> biggest argument to be in the gym like i'm not pushing the same weight as you know but um but i learned that the hard way exercise. girl <laughs> and that nutrition nutrition is key at mm. this age when you start having kids you cannot outwork your diet it doesn't matter so um Meal your nutrition prep. really has to be on point when you have kids yeah that clean eating 
Definitely. Super I'm trying to get this, that this baby fat off now. <laughs> yeah. That your biggest thing is going to be your nutrition because sometimes if you're eating super clean and you're still not gaining or you're not losing, it's because you have to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. So if mm-hmm. you're still eating too much of even healthy food, you're still going against yourself. Mm-hmm. So that calorie intake is super, super important. What calorie intake, and this is for me, okay, y'all don't, 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 don't need to follow this, but this is me just having had a baby. Um, the baby's eight weeks old. Uh, what calorie count should I be at in order to lose so my baby so, that way? So listen, and, and this is for you and everyone else that's listening. If you go to totalbody21.com, you can get in a free fitness assessment. Ooh, it'll break down I need all that assessment. Numbers. Yeah. So it'll tell you it's because it's based off of your height, your weight, your activity level, your age. So there's different re- things for different reasons. Um, and, and based off your goal, whether you're gaining, losing or maintaining, it'll break down your numbers as far as how much fat you should have in a diet, how much protein you should have and how many carbs you should have each day. Ooh. And you'll need to like reevaluate every couple of weeks as you're losing weight and as your activity level changes. So if you hmm. go there, it'll break down all your nutrition for you. And that's I for any. Love this. Okay. You're going to let everybody know what the website again, where to find you. If they want to hit you up, if they have questions, where to slide in your DM, the YouTube, yeah. give us all your social handles so that we can reach out and contact you and even get your services. Okay. You can definitely go to totalbody21.com. You can email totalbody21fitness at Gmail, or you can DM me at Leticia Marie Gardner. I usually get to those DMs first, um, but I also have a totalbody21 Instagram page that you can also um, DM me there for. And our YouTube is The Gardner Show. Um, but I don't really answer any fitness questions on there right now. That's more of the family dynamic. <laughs> I love that. I love that you are like showcasing how beautiful your family is as well. Um, you. You're doing it. You you are doing it right. You are goals. So thank you so much for today's episode and you um, just kind of helping, you know, dispel, guide us women, encourage, support, you know, the single moms out there that desire love, want to be that power couple, you know, what their mindset needs to be. I'm hearing a lot of self-love is required going on and putting First yourself out there, but doing it in a healthy way. And I love all the things that you shared. So there you guys have it. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at spicy Mati. Go to the spicy click and subscribe, download this episode, share it with a friend. Um, you can also go to the spicy life to schedule a consultation with me, but there you guys have it. You have just been spice. The spicy life.